Up until not too long ago, it's likely that you never heard the word gluten. But recently, this subject has been trending and gluten has become the last nutritional supervillain and it's been excluded from people's diets for its supposed evil qualities. But what the heck is gluten? Gluten is a protein formed when two chemicals, glutenin and gliadin, come into contact and form a bond. Gluten is naturally found in wheat, barley and rye and these are things that we have been eating for a long, long time. It's gluten that gives tau its elasticity and it also traps CO2 which causes pizza and bread to be so chewy. But what is gluten's problem? About 1% of the world's population has an autoimmune disorder called celiac disease. For these people, gluten ingestion injures the small intestine and prevents them from absorbing other nutrients from food when they ingest gluten. It causes all sorts of terrible side effects including bloating, stomach pain, fatigue, diarrhea, anemia, and even pain in the bones and joints. If you are celiac, gluten is pretty much a poison to you. Even very small quantities can wreak havoc and make you really sick. If you stay away from gluten for the rest of your life, things get back to normal and all will be good. The diagnosis of celiac disease is definitive. There are lab tests that confirm whether you have it or not. There is also another condition, kind of controversial, called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. In this case, patients don't test positive for celiac disease, but feel some of the same symptoms. As of today, there isn't a way to positively diagnose this condition, which is why it's hard to find numbers on how common it is. Some studies estimate the affected population at about 6%, others 11%, and so on. That being said, gluten may not even be the real problem. In a study published in 2013, researchers examined 37 subjects with non-celiac gluten sensitivity. They found that gluten might not have anything to do with the symptoms. When a broad class of nutrients called FODMAP, which meaning is too long for this video, was cut out of the subjects' diets, they stopped having gastrointestinal distress, even when they ate gluten. Stop and think about the situation. Gluten, present in the staple food that fed humans for thousands of years, all of a sudden is seen as something terrible. How could this be? For reasons still unknown, celiac disease has become way more common. The scientific community does not have definitive answers yet, but they do have a few hypotheses. Modern diet could be a factor, and some studies suggest that our microbiome has been changing through the years. However, none of that explains why some non-celiac people feel better when they cut gluten out of their diets. And keep in mind that gluten might not even be the one to blame. We still have much to learn. But one thing is for sure, to many people, giving up on gluten is a cultural matter. Sometimes it is stumbled upon when we are changing our habits to become healthier. The first step is usually cutting sugar, then fat, and sooner or later we get to the last public enemy, gluten. Lots and lots of books that got really popular also helped, and the gluten-free market exploded. Today you can find vacation routes and wedding buffets, all gluten-free. If you are celiac, then there is no question that you must eliminate gluten to live a decent life. For the rest of us, reducing traditional foods that contain gluten could also have advantages. These foods typically contain refined carbs, beer and other high calorie stuff. When we reduce them in a balanced way, people tend to lose weight. But you gotta be reasonable. To make up for gluten, some producers tend to include sugar in the products. Besides, many things are made with whole wheat flour, for instance, which contains gluten, but is also an important source of fiber. And, if you cut most breads, you will absolutely need to find something else to replace different kinds of nutrients that it contains. As with most things in life, you have to strike a balance. If you take a lab test and find that you are celiac, cut away gluten immediately. In the sensitivity cases, since there are no tests, the best course is to temporarily eliminate gluten and see how you feel. You can reintroduce it later to see if any of the symptoms come back. In practice, though, it doesn't matter whether science proves that gluten does have evil qualities or if this entire thing is a marketing play. What matters is that each of us feels healthy and good with ourselves, with or without gluten. And always look for your doctor before making big changes in your diet. Enjoy the video? Subscribe to make sure you know when others are posted.